Good morning, everybody. We're coming back at you with another edition of Bass East Bass Cast. Today, we've got Brent Ayler on the phone with us. What's going on, Brent? Not much. Just hanging out. Another typical day in Southern California, trying to get out of town to go back to work. That's right. You're headed to the Red River, right? <laughs> yeah, I head out to Red River tomorrow. Uh, should be a, should be a good one, I think. Yeah, it should be a fun tournament. You know, I think it's going to be a little better than what I was expecting. You know, August in Louisiana, just never a good time in the South Period to go bass fishing here during the day. Uh, and then the Red River's, you know, always been kind of a tough fishery, but I think it's really come back on the last couple of years. And I think it's going to be a lot of fish caught. It's going to be tough to get the big one, but I think it's going to be a lot of fish caught. Awesome. Well, um, getting right into our topic for today, we kind of wanted to talk about electronics and, you know, maybe get some tips on, you know, using electronics. I think there are a lot of guys that, you know, could certainly use some help from one of the best in the sport. Um, you got it. I, uh, you know, I use the Humberd 1198s. To me, I'm just more effective with that unit. A 998 is, is going to be the next best bet. It's just a little bit smaller screen. Uh, but to me, I, I, I use them so much that I kind of want the biggest and best. And, and so I go with that 1198. It, it really is a great unit. I, I'm just more productive with it. And, uh, you know, than any other unit out there on the market, it's just, to me, that's the one that, that I feel I can be competitive with. And they're so easy to use. Uh, it's so easy to scroll between the screens. The thing that I really like, and this is what I do to every tournament, is that I can save some preset screens to where I can adjust my screen size with the map, whatever sonar I want. You know, if I want my side image going, if I want my, my just regular 2D imaging going, if I want my down imaging going, you know, with my mapping, I can adjust the screens and save them like you do on a your favorite radio station in your car. And so all I have to do is hit one button and it immediately switches to the next screen. So the thing I really like about it is that everything's kind of not recording, but everything's scrolling at the same time. So if I idle over something with my mapping and my 2D and I see something weird down there, I can just hit one button and it'll go to my side image and it'll have that whole screen already scrolling on there so I can see what happened behind my boat. And it doesn't, you know, for instance, the, the side image doesn't start as soon as I switch screens. The side image has been going and it's been scrolling that screen. So when I switch over, I can see what was behind me now. Wow. And, and not only that, I can see what's behind me. And let's say I just catch a corner of it with a 2D, and I immediately switch screens, and I look off to the side, and maybe I see a big log off on the side, or maybe there's a ditch, or maybe there's a rock pile. I can take my cursor and scroll over and waypoint the actual rock. I can waypoint the actual log and do this stuff, even though it happened behind me, and I was on a different screen. So... That's one thing that I feel like I'm more effective is I can scroll between the screens and I can edit my screens and change them per the lake. So it's not something that's you know difficult to do. It takes a few seconds to just go, well, I want this map with with, with this sonar, or uh, you know, I want two, you know, I want side image and down image all together in one screen. I'm not going to adjust everything and, and preset it for that individual lake. And I do that for every lake that I go to, and that's just something that you know I do on the back of the. You know, on the console. So while I'm running around the lake with a big motor, that's what I'm doing. Is I'm constantly looking. I'm constantly just trying to get a good lay of the land as I'm running around. It's not just going from A to B. While I'm going from A to B, I'm constantly just trying to get a feel for the bottom contour, you know, throughout the lake. Exactly. And when it comes to, you know, when you're up on the front of the, the boat, you know, they call you the meter man for a reason. Um <laughs> How much do you really rely on that? I mean, is that something that's that's critical? I do. I, I, I rely on it a ton. Now, I don't necessarily catch individual fish off the graph like I, I do at, you know, some lakes. It's, it's not something you can do it day in and day out. You know, it has to be kind of a, to me, a spring or fall, you know, sometimes in the summer technique. Uh, and it's on certain lakes. You, I don't think you can just go to the Red River and go out and catch them off the meter. You know, you have to go to a Lake Lanier, or you have to go to a Lake Hartwell, you have to go to maybe a Beaver Lake or a Table Rock or, you know, places where the fish tend to get deep and kind of suspend. Um, you know, so uh, that's 
where I actually see the fish, drop to them, and catch them. But even when I'm not doing that, I do the same thing that I do on a big motor. I'm looking at the bank, I'm casting at the bank, but I'm constantly looking for any kind of depth change, you know, anything abrupt. Or maybe I, you know, going down the bank, I'm looking at the visible structure on the bank. Well, if I look down, maybe there's a rock pile there, maybe there's an underwater log. I'm looking for those things that other people don't find. And, and those are always the places that give you that extra bite on the tournament day to where you can mark something, you know, with a waypoint or you can re remember where something was to where if you can imagine, imagine a shoreline that everybody's cast into the visible cover on the shoreline and let's say, you know, three or four people are going down that same shoreline every single day, it gets pressure. Those, those fish get beat up while they slide out to those things with pieces of structure that will be directly under the boat. So every one of these guys is going down that bank, casting at the bank and everything you can see. And I can go down behind them and I can make a cast in front of the boat to a spot that no one's made a cast to yet, even though I'm going behind guys. So I'm constantly looking at stuff while I'm fishing, even when it's a shallow lake where you're fishing visible cover. I'm always looking for something different because that's what gives you that extra bite. Right, and everybody else isn't beating the, you know, the same single tree or something like that. Um, How about as far yeah. as mistakes you see you know guys made something that you know maybe would if you had to pick a couple of things that would help the weekend guy or you know the the bfl guy or you know who, who thinks he might really know his electronics but you know really doesn't know them as well as he should now, is there anything in particular that you see that guys do you know there, there is anything in particular that i i see guys do i, I think people get too hung up on it, it, it's funny coming for me because i kind of you know, I got that, the, the term meter man. You know, I've caught a lot of fish where I see them, I drop to them and catch them. Not every fish you see down there is going to be a bass. So, you know, I'd like to say pay attention to what you see down there, but I get a lot of guys that come up and tell me, and they go, I see fish all the time down there, and I can't catch them. I go, well, they're probably gar or drum or something else. That's why you can't catch them. If you see them down there and they're bass, you catch them. Right. If you, if you can't catch them, then they're probably not bass. And, you know, the one... The other thing that I would probably have to say uh, that people don't realize is that everyone wants to look for an arch. You know, that's kind of the, the big deal about what people say is that, oh, I saw an arch. Well, an arch means a fish. Well, they go, well, I'm sitting here, and I think there's a lot of fish here, but I'm not seeing any arches. Well, if you're directly on top of a fish, that arch is going to become a line because the way your, your, your signal works, your transducer works, is that, when that transducer sends the signal down, it bounces off the bottom and returns back to the unit, to the transducer, and then it sends the signal to, you, to the, the actual you know, graph. So when I sit there and my hummingbird sends that signal down, it records anything that is in between the transducer and the bottom. Now, if you're sitting in one spot and there's something continually in that zone, it's going to show it as a line. So it's not going to be an arch and an arch and all that kind of stuff. An arch means that the fish came into that signal and left that signal. A line means that that fish is directly under the boat. Uh -huh. And it's still under the boat. It's still in that signal. When that signal bounce, you know, goes down, bounces back up, when that thing is still somewhere in between the bottom and the transducer, it's going to show it as a line because it's continually stuck in that bouncing signal. So I think people are too concerned with arches than they are with a line. I don't think I think people when they see a line they don't know what it is. They don't realize it's the fish that they're waiting to get caught. Right. And, I mean, it, so I just learned thing. something for sure. <laughs> you, you have to realize. I mean, it's it, it, it's it's a ball. You know, the signal is a ball. It goes down, it bounces, and it comes back. Well, anything that's you know a fish or or, or in it or even if it's, it's a tree or anything like that. If you can imagine, that signal is constantly going down and coming back up. Anything in between is going to be a tree or a fish or you know some sort of object down there. That's what you have to look at is is that signal. So if that signal is gone, it's still on your screen. You know, I'm using that 1198, so it's a giant screen. So if I have it on full sonar, I might see an awesome you know piece of structure or a fish sitting there, but it's scrolled to the you know the back edge of the screen. Well. People still think, oh, well, I see it on my screen, so that fish is there. Well, no, he's gone. You know, the thing that's happening is the very start of the screen, so the right side of the screen is exactly
clue what's going on beneath your boat, beneath your transducer. Wow. So that's the other thing. So if a guy see, they see an arch, they go, oh, there's a fish directly underneath the boat. Well, you know, depending on your chart speed or if the boat's moving, you know, you might drop to, you know, underneath your, your troll motor thinking that that fish is there because you still see it on the screen. Well, he's already back behind your big motor, you know, if you're moving. So you have to kind of realize that you have to look at it and that signal is constantly bouncing and returning. And if it, if it shows it immediately underneath that, you know, transducer on the right side of the screen, that is exactly what's going on beneath your phone motor. That's a, that's a huge tip right there. No doubt. Um, I got to move on to the thing that I'm probably the most excited about is the bow mounted 360 imaging. How good do you think that's going to be? You know, we'll see. I, I, uh, I, I think it's going to be better than what we think. Um, I'm kind of trying not to think that because I want to get out there and kind of learn it and let things happen. But I, I'm kind of thinking it's going to be better than, than what we're actually thinking. And, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm sitting here in California right now, packing to get ready to go tomorrow. There's a 360 unit sitting there waiting for me out there and, uh, you know, my boat. So I can't wait to get out to put that thing on and try it out the Red River. I'm going to get to, you know, try it firsthand, you know, on my boat and, and see how it works. But I think it's going to be pretty special. I think it's going to change the way we fish. I agree, buddy. I think it's going to be the biggest thing since, uh, since whatever. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be huge. Um, yeah. Well, well, Brent, certainly appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Um, good luck at the Red River. Maybe we could follow up this interview with a couple little videos down there or something just to, you know, give the, give sure. the guys some stuff to, to look at for sure. Um, good luck, man, and travel safe. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Believe me, anytime I thought I'd come back on.